Hello everybody. Uh, my name is Pankaj. Uh, I work at Flipkart. A little bit about myself. Uh, I've been at Flipkart since the very beginning. Uh, in Jan 2010. At that point in time we had like three servers. Now we have two data centers with 5000 servers. Also very accident prone. I keep breaking myself. And I like taking pictures sometimes. You can find me as Spoonman on the internet. Okay. Does this work for everybody? Alright. So, I'll talk a little bit about Flipkart, what we do. Uh, we, Flipkart is a e-commerce portal. <coughs> uh, we have lots of users all over India, mostly. We do around 4,000 requests per second. Uh, maybe more sometimes when we launch new products. We do uh, one click build and deployment. I spoke about this uh, at PHP on clouds, another conference that we had some some time earlier. You can talk about it to me if you like later on. Uh, about how we do production pushes and stuff. Uh, there are a lot of devs uh, in Flipkart. Everybody's collaborating together uh, on Git and SVN. And it's a large setup. So let's talk about uh, what we are really going to talk about today. So essentially, uh, we are talking about building elastic infrastructures. Uh, why should we automate infrastructures? Uh, why should we automate infrastructures? How to scale uh, infrastructures and applications in an automated manner? And uh, we'll talk about an open source tool from Flipkart, uh, which helps us achieve this. And uh, if we have time, we'll also talk about uh, a philosophy of deep customization versus generalized tools. I, I believe that when you are trying to solve problems, you need to look at the problem and have a customized solution around it instead of using some general tool. Speaking of the problem, what is really the problem? And why are we building infrastructures? Uh, and why do we need elastic infrastructures? We'll talk about some of the history. So essentially, uh, in 2010, I was the only guy at Flipkart doing ops. Uh, before being at Flipkart, I was at Yahoo where I had this cushion living, where if I needed a server, I would write an email. If I needed a DNS entry changed, I'll write an email, and somebody will do it. But when I was the only one running infrastructure, I had to do all those things myself. And a lot of these things are really repetitive and boring, and also a pain in the ass to do. Uh, for example, uh, let's say uh, there is a new project happening, and Somebody comes to me and says, oh, give me five servers to do this. I'm sitting there installing Debian. I'm running all my things. I'm running Puppet, doing all the infrastructure setup. And 10 minutes later, this guy comes and says, well, forget about those. Give me these. So essentially, you're constantly struggling with meeting the demands of uh, what is going live. Because uh, if you are, if you are a web app or web company, which is, uh, growing really fast, uh, you need to be able to uh, do things in a very, very fast manner. You need to do, uh, you need to get machines, you need to set things up really fast. There are also uh, times when you don't know what, what hardware you have. Essentially, if you grow from uh, 10 machines to 50 machines in a span of a month or two, you really don't know what, what is live, what is not live. So dangerously, you could like reclone the machine or something. And there are a lot of routine tasks that you need to do, like monitoring setup, setting all those things, right? And you could like forget if you're setting things up manually. So essentially, the need was to be able to uh, create, a, create infrastructure in such a manner that the obvious things figure themselves out. 
that you don't have to do uh, those repetitive tasks again and again. So, uh, some of the challenges for this is uh, to provision hardware as well as virtualized machines uh, just like that in a click uh, without doing anything. Uh, how to configure DNS automatically? Like if you if you manually edit the zone files, you will end up making mistakes sometime or the other, right? So you sh you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't edit the zone files. It should just happen on its own. Uh, also, uh, if you if you are growing really fast, you need to be able to set up uh, lots of uh, infrastructure pieces on a daily basis. Set up MySQL clusters. Set up monitoring and alerting, log aggregation, uh, and all these things. It should just happen automatically. So that, that's 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 one of the key reasons why you should build infrastructures in an automated manner. So some of the early learnings, uh, really early on, uh, three four years ago, was that you need to standardize on hardware. You you cannot uh, have like all sorts of different hardware running around in your data center you, you say okay i'm going to use one two three types of machines and let's say you are using vms right so you say okay i have a small vm i have a medium vm and i have a large vm and these are the configurations of the vm it will have this much memory this much uh, cpu and this much disk space and all the problems that you're trying to solve you uh, put them in a bracket here or there you you find out about remote installation and management right so uh most uh most hardware comes with uh, a remote management uh card of some sort so it will have its own operating system and network interface so you can manage the hardware from there uh you could like reboot the box you could do anything with it so that was also an early win to find hardware that allows you to do remote management because if you if you are stuck with hardware that you have to get a remote hands person to do things with every time you have to reboot a box every time you have to uh, do rate control or anything uh, to do with hardware you shouldn't be uh, you shouldn't be dependent on a human being in the data center you should be able to do it remotely uh, virtualization obviously helps a lot another thing that is really important is to package software. Uh, if you you don't really need to make uh, RPMs or deb, even if you have tarballs, uh, that will work. But you need to have some standardized mechanism of deployment. You cannot just SCP code and uh, hope that will work. Uh, another early win for us was from the very beginning started using Puppet. Uh, Puppet uh, is a configuration management tool. It lets you push configurations to uh, to servers so you can break your configurations down in two parts uh, one is the base environment that is going to be the same for all the machines and some are machine specific or application spe specific information that you keep in a, another environment in puppet uh, and one of the most important things is to have a centralized uh, inventory or a host database and we'll talk about why this is so important so in the beginning uh, we had uh, we were managing our infrastructure or the um, the list of hosts we have our host names and what is the rack position uh, what is the network ip of this box in in a google sheet or something which was not scaling at all so you you tell the site ops guy uh, do uh, go to this rack uh, this unit and do something and he has no idea what he's doing he's just going to pull some wrong wire out right and if you if you are managing your infrastructure in in a uh, excel sheet uh, somebody may read the wrong column and reboot the wrong server which has actually happened and you may allocate hardware that you don't uh, you know that it's not even being used and you don't know about it so all these problems were there in our infrastructure and how do how did we solve it essentially we go to a diagram like this uh, which talks about interaction between different components 
So the the problem essentially is of information and communication of that information to various pieces which are taking action. Uh, we will look at this graph again uh, once we understand some things. At the core of the whole problem is uh, the host information. What is the purpose of a machine, right? So you know the purpose of the machine. Does your infrastructure know the purpose? And how do you communicate that purpose to your infrastructure? For that, uh, you need a sort of a information store or a host database where you can keep the details of all the hosts. You have, uh, okay, this is a box. This is its physical location. Uh, this is the rack where it is at. This is the network port that it is connected to. Uh, and if it is a virtual machine, this is the box it is hosted on because all this information you need to know about the machine to take actions. And you you should be able to tag a host. Let's say uh, the ability to tag a host gives you a lot of, uh, uh, it gives you a lot of uh, information about it. So what you can do, for example, is uh, let's say you have uh, MySQL databases, maybe you have 10 clusters where there are some masters and there are slaves. So if you were able to tag all the masters saying these are all the masters, they may be masters of different components of data, but if you can tag them, you can take action on all of them together. For example, uh, you may you may need to do uh, you may want to say that you cannot write two slaves, right? So you will want to set up read only equals to on on all the slaves. So what you can do is you can tag all the slaves together and push a configuration specifically to them, right? So all those things are really easy to do. Also it becomes a single source of truth for everyone and for a lot of people to interact. So what what happens there is, so this is a, uh, this is like a screenshot of hostdb. So here you see the host name, right? And this is the information about this host. Uh, this, is, this host is actually a virtual host because you can see that it has uh, these classes fke and vbc which is our pseudo name for a virtual machine. So, uh, you know who created this host and when. Uh, you know uh, what is the full name of this host, what is the IP of this host. And all this information is here, right? So it's it's all fine. It's not a great deal. So you store information somewhere. It's fine. What it allows you to do is, it allows you to get everybody on the same page. Now you can communicate to everybody in your organization with a host name. You say, do this to that host. And if there is a guy in the data center, he can go to host TV and see where it is physically located. Uh, if you want to, if you want to set DNS for the host, right, you could write a script which could look this guy up and say, okay, this is the FQDN, this is the IP, I will make this own file. Another simple idea which is very powerful is to have an API for this host database, right? So if you, if you have a HTTP API where you say, give me tag, give me all hosts which are in this tag, right? So then you can do really interesting things, right? Uh, because it is a single source of truth, you you can you can be uh, sure that whatever you are going to do is is the truth. Like even if it is wrong, right? It is wrong for everybody, right? It's not that somebody thinks that this is the truth, somebody else thinks this is the truth, which allows you to do even more interesting things. You can you can create uh, decentralized pieces of software which interacts with this centralized repository to do to uh, to create a virtual machine on a particular physical box. So you could you could go uh, to hostdb and check like how many physical machines I have, how many virtual machines are on each physical machine, which is the one which is the most free where I can create this virtual machine, right? So you can make like really really uh, interesting decisions. You could, you, so for example, lots of you people use Puppet here, right? How many people use Puppet? Alright, quite a few. So, 
one of the problems with Puppet is to get a list of hosts and create nodes, right? So Puppet allows you to do an ENC. So if I am creating a machine and destroying a machine on, let's say you are scaling and scaling down, scaling up, scaling down at will. So if you are creating and uh, destroying machines at will, you don't want to be sitting there editing node files, right? So what you can do is, as soon uh, you can put that information in the host DB, write an agent which scans the host database and then creates these node files automatically, right? Isn't that smarter? Uh, you can create an agent which uh, adds uh, DNS records. Uh, you can create an agent which adds automated monitoring to host based on specific things. Uh, we'll get into how we can uh, express that. So now we can go back to this diagram, right? So in the middle, we have this host database right, which has an API, uh, you have, this is like our orchestration layer, we call it cloud, so it just generally it just creates virtual machines. Uh, so what cloud, so what you can do is, you can have a software here which creates a machine in HostDB, right, uh, there will be an agent here which says, okay, uh, get host information, get puppet information, so an agent will create a virtual machine, right, and say, okay, uh, when the virtual machine comes up, right, it say, okay, what, what am I? What is my host name? What am I supposed to do, right? All this information you get from Puppet, you can express in Puppet that this machine is actually a web server and it needs these packages and or whatever you want to express, right? And similar things you can do like a monitoring system, uh, service. Let's say uh, you have uh, you have Nagios, right? Lots of people use Nagios. And you have to keep adding hosts, you have to keep adding them in clusters and all of that, right? If you can just write an agent which says, okay, so we have a web, we have web servers, right? All web servers perhaps need the same sort of monitoring, right? Let's say you are a web server for a particular uh, thing in a, a website and you, all your brother's web servers will need the same sort of monitoring. So what you can do is you can put a tag saying web server for XYZ, right? and put the monitoring information right there in the tag. Now what HostDB allows you to do is, uh, it will pull, all, all the hosts will pull their tag specific information as well, right? So whatever you write in one tag, it's, it's just shared across all the machines that share the tag. It's a simple, simple thing, but it is very powerful and we'll see what all we can do with it. So essentially, as I mentioned, right, so it's, it's, you have a single source of truth, you define the life cycle of the host, right? If you have to delete a host, uh, you go to the host database and say, this host is no longer live or this is dead. So then you have the uh, orchestration layer, the cloud layer, looking at host database and saying, okay, this one is dead, so it will go and kill that machine off and take all the resources. So how, how did we do it? So it's essentially very simple, you take Puppet and you take HostDB, which is another open source software that we, we have written. Uh, we've been using HostDB uh, inside Flipkart for three years now, so it's uh, fairly mature software. And the author of HostDB is here today, so you can come to Flipkart booth and talk about it. So what does it do? It's, uh, it, it's built to be highly available and reliable. Uh, we, we didn't build HostDB to be uh, really fancy using latest and greatest technology. We just wrote it in Perl and it is, the main purpose is to be available and be reliable. It allows you to have namespaces, right? What, what are namespaces? So you could, you could have all information about uh, hosts uh, which relate to your infrastructure in one namespace and let's say there is another team which is doing something else with machines, right? So you have your own tags, you, you are doing your own clustering, but there would be somebody who wants to cluster machines differently, right? You want to cre create clusters in tags, they want to cre create cluster in tags differently. So you can have another namespace. Uh, HostDB is based on Git, so all the information that you have is saved inside Git and you can roll back any 
uh, commitment. So if if by mistake somebody says, okay, uh, change this, uh, so you can always go back to the previous version, and you have an API. So it it, it has a web application. You saw the screenshot. Uh, it has an API. It has a command line interface. So you could write scripts that can query. Uh, so th there is a Perl module. There is uh, there is a, another C library. So you could uh, write programs that query uh, HostDB directly. And if you don't want to use the API, Puppet. Uh, Puppet is uh, infrastructure and configuration management tool. So what what you do with Puppet is Essentially, uh, you define all your machines in Puppet as nodes, and then you define classes, right? Which which say what is the purpose of this host? What all should go into this box? So what we do with Puppet is we we essentially segregate the things in two environments. One is a base environment where all the information like uh, how to do net network, right? How to uh, what Default packages will come. What uh, uh, pseudo file, pseudo privileges will be there? Uh, what are user limits and like basic stuff that every machine should know about itself. That goes inside the base in environment, and it is that important. Which means that there is an agent running uh, on each and every machine, which updates itself automatically, right? So if you make any base change, it reflects on all the machines automatically. Then there is another environment where you don't want to do things. Uh, sometimes you just want to do things once at a time. Let, let's say when you're setting up a MySQL server. So if you want to set up MySQL automatically, so, so that a master comes up and a slave comes up and all, so there are some things that you may want to do. So you will write class and you'll write scripts that will do things automatically, right? Uh, so you don't want to run them again and again. So those things you go in, go inside an app environment. Which run once or maybe once in a while. You can use HostDB as ENC. So Puppet has a concept of an external node configuration. So what it allows you to do is it allows you to have uh, it allows you to dump the host information in YAML. So uh, you can so th th this is the this is the exact configuration that you use, right? So here where we'll say external nodes equals to one script, right? Our script will generate a YAML file, and then uh, Puppet will just use it to say, "Okay, these are the nodes." Right. So what we do is we define our machines and virtual machines inside uh, a HostDB, right? And we run agents to dump it to Puppet, and in Puppet we define uh, what is the what is the purpose of this box. Some of the examples of what 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 you can do and how you build elastic infrastructure with it. For example, auto provisioning of hardware. So, how many people uh, ha deal with real hardware? Uh, have have a data center and uh, rack machines and stuff, right? So, it's it's a really long process, right? First, you acquire hardware, then you have to rack it, then you have to go configure RAID, then you have to go configure IP addresses. And you have to do a lot of things. And every time you need to reclone a box, you need to go to some really, really bad interface, click, which takes like 15 minutes to do. So it's really painful. So what what we wanted was, as soon as you rack the machine, uh, the infrastructure should know there is a new machine. And it should know, OK, this is a new machine. It has this much RAM. It has these many CPUs. Uh, and it should become this, right? So that's what we want to achieve. And how did we achieve it, right? So essentially, you write an agent which does auto discovery. So essentially, uh, when all the machines are racked, uh, they go. Uh, they have two interfaces. One interface is connected to the regular LAN. Another one is on a management interface, right? So management uh, LAN is there. So as soon as the machine comes up in a default VLAN, our uh, we just uh, we just pixie boot the box and we do a discovery. We we figure out okay this much memory it has. Uh, these are the MAC addresses of this box and all all the information that you need, right? And then you populate that information into HostDB, right? Now 
uh, inside HostDB, uh, now you have all the machines that are no, not yet live. They are not yet installed. They just have been discovered. So what you can do is then, then you can mark them and give them a purpose. So let's say uh, if there is, so you can do these things, even even do these things automatically, right? So when the machine comes up, if you, if in HostDB you say this is supposed to go inside cloud, so that will express that, okay, install Debian version this, uh, this is the IP address, put uh, DNS and all of those things, right? And you use uh, DHCP to boot it into uh, ISO image uh, that will give you all those information. So this is, this is the part of hardware det detection, right? So you talk, you say this is a new box that came up. Uh, when the box comes up, it doesn't have a host name or IP or anything. But you can express that, okay, if, if this is the uh, tag, so each machine is defined by a service tag, right? So if this is the tag, this is the IP. So essentially you can figure out, okay, it is connected to this port of the switch, it, it has a MAC address this, it has this uh, physical location, unit number. So you can, you can write scripts that interact with network devices to change VLAN if you wish, right? To, to do different things with the box. Virtual machines are even simpler. What you can do is, you can just uh, create a new machine inside uh, the host database and write an agent which scans a tag saying new virtual machine, right? And it does what it needs to do, whatever it may be, right? You you don't really, uh, you can use KVM, you can use uh, OpenVZ, you can use containers, whatever you want to use. You can express what needs to be done post the recognition. So essentially what we do is, uh, we uh, we have these motherships on which an agent is running and the agent uh, creates creates the virtual machine, uh, starts the host up uh, and the first task of each host is to run Puppet, right? As soon as the host runs Puppet, it knows what it is, right? Because uh, when you put, when you put the machine inside, when you put the machine inside, let's say this is the box we are trying to build. When you put the machine inside, you have put this information. So when pup, when the puppet agent will build the node configuration, it will know that I have to add these classes, right? So it's it's really simple. Puppet knows what to do. Uh, then uh, when 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 you need a DNS agent to do something, a new machine comes up. DNS uh, agent looks at these things and it generates it generates the zone file. So even DNS automating DNS is really simple. Uh, DNS looks at a tag, saying, okay, all the machines that are participating in this tag, I need to build a zone file called X for this. And there is another tag, I create another zone file for this. It's really simple. Uh, essentially, as I mentioned, right, tags. So you have a tag section. For example, Nagio server is a tag, and these two guys are members. One is in one DC, one is in another DC. You have two Nagio servers. So essentially, uh, the, the Nagio server will have its own specific rules which will go inside the config part, right? And it, it will just uh, use those rules to generate configurations. How to automate backups? Essentially, the same thing. You tag it with backup. I'll give you an example of what we can do. So you can say, and this can be different for different hosts, right? So this host has a backup thingy, right? So you can have this information specific to a host or you can have this information specific to a tag. So if you have something that is common across hosts, you put it in a tag. If you have something common uh, across, uh, what, if you have something specific for a host, you put it in the host configuration. And then you can write an agent which just dumps stuff for it. This is the same way we automate everything. Monitoring on the hosts also is generated using information from HostDB. Um, Scaling applications, right? So, because we can create uh, machines automatically with just, uh, we can I interact with HostDB using an API, uh, which creates a machine, and if we can express what needs to go inside a box, right? So, even the puppet rules that go inside a box, even the puppet rules that goes inside the box, right? 
are there. So what you all you need to do is express express the box, right? And then everything will just happen. Hmm? So you can you can just create machines at will, and you can de destroy them at will. So essentially, you can write a small script that monitors your request per second. For example, a really silly example: you monitor request per second. If it is increasing, just add another box, right? So I mean, it's it's not that simple to scale, but you get the idea. Right? So you can do interesting things with it. For example, unbound is expressed as its own class, right? So whenever you need to add a new new uh, DNS uh, client or a DNS uh, server, you just you just uh, create a machine with that tag, and it just builds it, right? Uh, we we can express we can generate load bin, load balancer uh, configurations using using this. You can express load balancer information inside the configuration, and a specific agent will read it and write configurations into uh, the load balancer itself. Same way we build uh, MySQL clusters. So essentially, uh, you you define that this guy. So essentially, one of the one of the problems is. Uh, when you have to build a MySQL cluster, it's a really painful long procedure, which is which is repetitive and can be easily automated. So you create a master, you set a slave, you create another machine, you set that to a slave. So it's really simple to automate. So you can you can set up a tag, say so this is the master, and you can set up a tag which is a slave of relationship, and you can just you can you can have rules to create partition, add packages, uh, set up automated backup, and all of these. Uh, HostDB is uh, released under Apache license. Uh, it's available at GitHub. Uh, we are committed to maintain it. So, uh, the deep conviction here is when when you are building. So, the reason this is sort of a framework is when you're doing something specific, right? You you just need a bare minimum framework, and you have to build around it. So. If you see uh, the host DB and the agent uh, thing is really simple, but it has allowed us to uh, really do a lot of interesting things because it allows you to express whatever you please because there is a centralized information about host. Uh, that is about it. And I mean, I'm not preaching a way of doing things, but this works for us. And that is my talk. So I'm, you can follow Flipkart Tech for information about Flipkart. Uh, you can follow me. Questions? Yes. Yes. You're building your own uh, tool to maintain hosts. Yes. For the amount of servers that you may have, uh, Puppet is, you know, kind of given. Not like you're building it, right? It's a it's a third party tool, which mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense because your business is a little different. Now, is there a comparison that you've done with other tools um, that maintain host, right? Mm -hmm. Similar to what you're doing with HostDB, and you found uh, not so tools I'm beneficial. I'm just curious. So I I mean, uh, when we started writing HostDB, this was like 2010-11. At that point of time, there was there were not many uh, CMDB. Yeah. Now I think there are a couple available, but I think the interesting thing is the ability to access information about hosts and uh, cluster them together in tags and having namespaces. So we have built the tool very; it's customized to our approach to solving things, but it is also a very generalized tool that can work for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I think there are tools. But I don't think there is something comparable uh, which can do what we do. Okay. Okay. Uh, one other question. I, I I wanted to understand the part where you mentioned once you rack your server, there's something that gets automated out, and there's mm -hmm. you know in, information going to host DB, right? Because you're talking now at a hardware level, mm -hmm. and I don't know. You have an agent running. So what else is, that picks it yeah, up? Yeah, so I can explain some. So essentially, uh, so you have two interfaces. One is the regular interface of the box, mm -hmm. and one is the management interface. Yeah. Using the management interface, you could reboot the box. 
you could change the yeah. boot order of the box. So mm -hmm. essentially, uh, as soon as any box comes in the default VLAN, it is it is made to boot in PXE mode, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. As soon as you boot in PXE mode, uh, there is a default DHCP server which gives you uh, an IP and a host name, and it also gives you a kernel to boot. As soon as you boot that kernel, because you are in the default VLAN, you get a particular version of Linux. As soon as you boot into that box, it is customized and it runs a discovery script. Okay. Essentially, that script then communicates back to HostDB and says, I found this. Okay. So you, you have, because when, when you mention single source of truth, you still, in, in our world, right, we do a lot of UCS. There is that world that still maintains host, which is away from Foman. Yeah, right, so right. but I, you. I, I don't it. want to do that. I, I get that. Yeah, yeah, so I don't want anybody to sit and enter that information because I can discover it and it is more reliable. Makes sense. Right. Yeah, thank you. Question. Uh, <coughs> hi, you mentioned that you are using Puppet for configuration management. So how about the orchestration part? Uh, is that M Collective or some other? So. Uh, Currently, uh, for orchestration, what do you mean? Like to create machines? Yeah, doing something remote execution or you know remotely okay, running yeah. commands. So we we are uh, so right now we are in the process of using M Collective to do that. M Collective is really good at uh, at doing that. So we we don't use anything to do remote execution, large scale remote execution. If we have to uh, do something like that, we put it in the item potent. So essentially, we we have uh, divided our configuration in uh, base and item potent. Let's say you need to upgrade uh, LS on all machines. So essentially, you just go to the base classes and say uh, LS should be this version above. And then, uh, because it is item potent and it is running every minute, right? It will immediately reflect on all the boxes. You don't have to worry about it. So you you don't do I, if if it is not something that can be expressed as packages, right? We don't do it. So that is one thing that I mentioned right in the beginning. So you have to manage your infrastructure using uh, a package management system, right? If you're doing remote execution of commands, let's say you want to restart Apache on all the boxes, right? That is probably one of the use cases. For that, you can use M Collector. So one of like all of these are agent-based solutions. So one of the worlds, like, if everything is working fine with the agent-based solution, then it's good. But what happens when the agent fails? Let's say either your auto-discovery agent fail or something which is, you are relying on, which is something on the box to gather all the info. What happens when that fails? Like one, yeah. So then it fails. Okay. So essentially, uh, because it is, it is a single piece of software that is running everywhere, right? It is, you test it and then you deploy it. And if it has a bug, it has a bug. And then, then you fix it. You discover the bug and then you fix it. So, like, I mean, you, you we take lot, let's say there is, there is an agent which is writing a DNS configuration file. This is a very important agent, right? If this agent fails, uh, Flipkart will not run, right? Because no host will be able to find the other host inside our network. So, we, we write the agent in such a manner that it takes uttermost precautions as to this is the specific thing that you're looking for. If it doesn't exist, don't do anything. So there are a lot of rules. And, and is it a single agent doing everything or are there like different agents? There are different, different agents. Purpose? So that is why deep customization, right? So for DNS, there is a specific piece of code that's doing it. It's a small code maintained by one guy. To, to do something else, let's say monitoring, right? To, to do monitoring for web servers. It is a small piece of code maintained by the guy who's managing the web servers for a particular department. So, because information is central, but how you do things with it is up to you. Hello. 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 Hey, uh, hi. Hi. Uh, this question is related to like, yeah. So, your host DB is there. And then your machines are connected to a rack. So, uh, so the host DB is something like, uh, which have a, some sort of an agent is what you said, right? So which, you know, uh, which polls, I mean, like, which checks if the 
one rack yeah. is connected and yeah, then yeah, it yeah. gets the data <clears throat> so yeah. so any concept of uh, a messaging broker where you know or a worker where it checks for uh, it checks on a udp or the multicast and then gets the data sure. something like that sure sure i mean we are not at that scale like for example we we have what 5000 boxes and how many agents maybe 10 15 20 30 000 agents and we can scale that by just having uh, multiple boxes we we the, and very little network uh, talk is there so i think the broker and all that is useful when when you are doing large scale network io yeah but still i see in flipkart that is their large scale io so there are things where we do large scale io for that we use request broker but okay. for this particular uh, software there there is i don't think right now there is a need but if we become uh, if, if we grow to 50000 and 80000 machines where like millions of uh, host db calls are being made then uh, obviously we will need to look into that direction so is that something like the agent and the host db are with the perl or is it something like the agents are in other language and then uh, you can db? write agent in any language okay so because host db uh, allows you to do a rest interface you can write it in any language okay so right. you you pull it on on different machines with the scripts yes right awesome thanks more questions all right thank you guys